what's going on guys, in today's video I'm going to be talking about servo control with the Raspberry Pi. So if you've noticed in my previous video I talked uh, briefly about the 16-bit PWM servo control and I showed you guys how to set that up. However, um, honestly that servo controller has a bit of jitter and it's, it's pretty difficult to work with. So I sort of stumbled across this uh, servo controller platform and in my experience it, it's been working really well and it's been relatively easy to work with. Uh, it's provided by this website Pololu Robotics, uh, pololu.com. The links for all these parts will be in the description like always. But let's go ahead and dig into this servo controller and talk about the features a bit. So first and foremost if you go onto the site you'll notice that there's several different versions of this servo controller. Um, this is the 18 channel uh, version so that means you can hook up 18 different uh, servos to it. Uh, the site provides 6, 12, 24, no 6, 12, 18, 24 uh, channel version servo controllers. So really depending on your use case you can sort of fine tune how many uh, inputs are needed for your project. What's really great about this platform too is that it's really well documented. So let's talk about the power um, options you have. So the board needs power as well as the servos. Um, they also show you different wiring schematics so you can run everything on one power supply, but that's not ideal. In this tutorial we'll be covering um, a separate like how to set up a separate power supply for the servos and then we will be communicating to the Raspberry Pi via the TTL serial interface so I initially tried to um, connect the servo controller to the Raspberry Pi via the mini USB serial interface however that was slightly program uh, problematic on the Raspberry Pi side uh, setup wise so TTL um, the GPIO pins works pretty well as an alternative so with all that said and done uh, let's go ahead and talk about the parts that you're going to need so you're going to need four female to female jumper cables so um, one for ground one for five volts um, one for the TX pin and one for the RX pin so it's going to be wired up in a sort of crossover setup. So the TX pin on the servo controller is going to link to the RX pin. Um, you're also going to need a mini USB cable um, because the way that we're going to interface with this device is we're actually going to program it with the computer um, like these subroutines and then we're going to call those subroutines via Python script on the Raspberry Pi. That's the ideal way to do it and you'll see why in a bit. We'll dig into that a bit later. And for testing purposes I'm going to be using two nine gram servos. So you can use really any um, server you want with this platform. The specs are listed in their documentation of what sort of the you know uh, power requirements are required and what it can handle but uh, in my experience it's pretty vers versatile um, also I'm going to be using an external power supply to power these two 9 gram servos so I'm just going to be running them off 5 volts um, it, the amount of power for your servos really depends on the type of server you, you have in your application so definitely do your research there don't like you know quote anything that I'm doing here definitely double check to make sure you're feeding everything the right voltages and whatnot uh, you may also need a small uh, screwdriver to screw in the the power to these screw in terminals alternatively you can use these two GPIO pins for power as well but I'm just gonna hardwire it in there so with all that said and done let's go ahead and wire this bad boy up so if we flip this over um, I know it's a bit hard to see, but uh, all the pins here are listed. There's a ground, VIN, RX, and TX. So I'm gonna go ahead and wire this side up real quick. So 
Um, brown's gonna be ground, red will be the five volt, and then what is it? RX will be orange, and TX will be yellow. So I'm gonna do that real quick. So I just have them lined up right here, and I'm just pushing them in so these four pins go. And then now that that's done, we can head over to the Pi. So um, I'm using a Pi Zero here just because it's small form factor. The, the Pi 3 will work as well. Uh, quick note about this setup though, because the Raspberry Pi is sort of set up weird, when we do go to um, activate the TTL serial interface, we're gonna have to disable the Bluetooth um, functionality because the Bluetooth chip runs by default on this uh, TTL serial interface that we're going to be using. So if you have plans to use Bluetooth, you're going to probably need to go another route and maybe try hooking it up via the USB. Um, but we're not covering that in this video. So let's go ahead and wire this up. So we need um, 5 volts. So that's the second pin on the top row. And then ground would be this third pin, so the brown goes to ground. And then, like I said, um, orange was was RX on the servo controller, so we're gonna hook it up to the, the TX pin, which is right next to the ground pin. And then finally we just have this yellow um, GPIO. Jumper and this goes to the RX pin on the Pi. And then as wiring is concerned, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my power leads to the servo controller. So what I need to do here is loosen these two screw terminals. Um, I know from experience the negative side is the rightmost screw terminal, so I'm just going to put that in. It's very important that you make sure that the polarity is correct on these. Uh, yeah, if you if you switch the these two terminals, it won't work properly. Apologies, these wires are pretty janky, so it's a little bit difficult for me to shim them to place so that's good there and then finally the red positive wire all right so now this is ready to accept five volts via this barrel connector. Um, let's go ahead and hook up our servos. So I have two servos here just for demonstration so we can, um, I can demonstrate, you know, controlling multiple servos. So uh, on the back, you know, all the servo interfaces are labeled. So it's from zero to 17. So we're just gonna be plugging in zero and one so also the different uh, signal positive and negative is also labeled. So on these nine grams uh, servos, the orange is signal, red is um, positive, and then brown is uh, ground or negative. So we're gonna hook that up real quick. So signal is the leftmost. And there we go. So that's it. That's pretty much, that covers wiring, so let's review what I've done here real quick. I've hooked up these two 9 gram servos, um, signal on the left, um, 5 volt uh, on the middle, and then ground on the right. And then I have the barrel connector hooked up here, so uh, positive on the left side, and then uh, negative on the right. And then I've bridged these two boards together, so via the TTL serial interface, so we have ground 5 volts, um, what is the orange here, so RX and then TX and then the same thing here as well, but uh, these two pins are switched here, the uh, 
RX and TX. So that pretty much covers physical setup. We're gonna head over the computer next. I'm gonna be talking about how to set up the Pi and then as well how to set up the uh, Maestro contr uh, servo controller via their Maestro, Maestro control um, program that's provided. So I just SSHed into my Raspberry Pi, so I'm going to walk you guys through how to set up the serial interface. So you need to make sure that you power your Pi, and uh, because we wired up via the GPIO, the um, Maestro server controller will be powered too. You should see a orange blinking light indicating that the GPIO pin is uh, setup is correct. We don't really have to worry about the servo power at this point in time, but if you want to, you can hook that up as well. Um, but with all that said, done, let's go ahead and get the serial interface set up. So the first thing we need to do is um, edit the Raspberry Pi config. So we do sudo raspberry-config. I've already done a lot of this stuff, so. I'm just so it may show up uh, differently from what you see here but uh, once you type that command in you're gonna go to interfacing options and you need to go to serial and you want to do no so you want to uh, disable the login shell and you want to enable the serial port hardware and then hit OK once that's done, go ahead and finish. And now we have to install PySerial, so we have to do python -m pip install PySerial. So go ahead and do that. Um, it may take a while, but just be patient. So as you can see, it was successful. Uh, once that's done, we're going to have to pull down the uh, Python library. So type git clone and then copy and paste the link. Um, go ahead and do that. So go ahead and hit enter after this. I'm not gonna do that because I think I already have some particular files in there. So hit enter, it should uh, pull down the git project and then you should be good to go. After that's done, we have to disable the Bluetooth U UART because by default, uh, the Raspberry Pi uses a serial interface for the Bluetooth controller. So to, to edit that all we need to do is type sudo nano config.txt and then scroll all the way to the bottom and you want to append this line here dt overlay equals pi3 dash disable dash bt um, go ahead and save and exit after you've done that go ahead and do a sudo reboot so since I've already had that done, I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, after it reboots, go ahead and type this command here, dmessage pipe grep tty to verify that everything is set up correctly. And in this case, we can see here um, uh, these two things right here. You should have some similar output. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how we get the serial interface configured on the Raspberry Pi. So now we're going to move over to setting up the Maestro controller using the uh, Maestro control software. Okay, so I've just moved over to my Windows desktop. And the first thing that you want to do is go ahead and download the Maestro servo controller software and you can get it at this site uh, polalu.com um, the link will be in the description on my website so go ahead and download that for whatever operating system you're using in this case I'm using Windows uh, once you do that plug the micro USB 
uh, to USB cable into the Maestro controller and into your computer and then fire up the uh, Maestro control center software so this is what you're seeing here this is the software interface um, so you should see that it's connected to uh, you know device number whatever um, there's some controls here if you have trouble the first thing that we need to do is enable channel 0 and 1 because we have the two servos hooked up to that so let's go ahead and do that once you click these you should notice that they move and they um, sort of what do you call it orientate themselves to the middle so this is essentially how we are going to record uh, the different positions now uh, we can use the slider here you notice that when we move it the servos will start to move I guess I'll walk you through all these different tabs um, so this is sort of where we'd set the positions um, here is I guess where we'd see errors this is sort of the channel settings serial settings sequence script so I think um, what's really relevant is status sequence and script we don't really need to mess with errors uh, channel settings or serial settings by default um, you should have it at UART fixed baud rate 9600 um, I already have a script on here so I'm gonna go ahead and clear this out I should just delete everything. So now that we have a blank slate, let's go ahead and start rec uh, recording some movements or saving some positions um, on the this control software here. So the first thing we need to do is move the different channels for the servo. So I'm going to go ahead and move channel 0 and 1, these sliders to the left, and then save the frame. The first frame is 0, and then move both of them to the right, save it as another frame, and then finally recenter everything um, as our third frame. So now we have three movements, and if we go to sequence, we can see all of these movements saved in different frames here. So if we play the sequence, you should notice that your servos move. Um, now that that's done, we can copy this sequence uh, to the script. So essentially what this copy to the script means is we can copy these movements to the server controller memory. And this sequence is essentially, you can think of it as a function. It's called a subroutine. Um, so if we copy this to the script, you can see it's saved as sequence zero. And we have all the frames here. So if we go back here and um, actually it's let's go back to the sequence tab and hit new sequence let's make a new function and we start over uh, we can see the frame goes back to zero now let's um, change it up a little bit let's make the channel zero go to the right on the slider and then channel one go on the left and say that as one frame uh, and then have them return to center so save that frame so now when we go to sequence we have two sequences right we had our previous movement um, essentially in one subroutine and then we have this new set of movements in another uh, subroutine so we're going to copy the new sequence we just made to the script and you can see something weird here in the sense that we have uh, sort of a redundant functionality here so it's always good to just before you copy everything in the script just delete everything on the script and then go back here and click copy all sequence to script so that way you don't have redundant code and you have more memory so now we can see that we have these two subroutines right 
So the first subroutine has the three movements, and then the second uh, subroutine has these two movements. And we can go ahead and apply settings. And now it should be saved to our server controller memory. So we can see here there are 8192 bytes and we use 175. So it's it's I think the best way to go about defining your logic is to have as small of uh, movements um, defined in the servo controller and, and abstract all the more complex uh, repetitive stuff you know in Python. So now that this is done we can head over to our Raspberry Pi again and SSH in and then to create a Python script to interact with the servos via code. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've SSH back into my Raspberry Pi and I've navigated into the Maestro um, Git project we pulled down earlier. So I've created these two sample scripts here and I'm going to sort of walk you through different ways to interact with the servo controller. So the first way is we're physically going to control the servos manually and not really interact with the subroutines. And I'm, the way that we're going to do that is in the library um, we can set the positions manually so in order to do that there are a number of things we have to do or put into our Python script so we need to import the maestro um, library and then I've imported time here to sort of add a pause in between um, each of the movements so we need to initialize the uh, controller here so I do servo equals maestro controller and then you can see here I I have um, channel 0 and channel 1 so every time we want to set a movement we have to set the acceleration like the speed it moves at and we have to set the target so that's the PWM like position and then uh, we have to do that for each channel so you can see here that these first set of movements I'm moving the two two servos to uh, 6,000 and setting the acceleration to 25 then I'm sleeping for two seconds and then I'm um, setting the acceleration to 25 and then moving them to the position 1,000 so if I go and type python test.py it should go ahead and move those servos um, so that's a very simplified um, example here of how to manually control their servos this is not the ideal method to control their servos because if you think about it you'd have to type a lot of lines of code just for like simplified movements where it's much a much better methodology to go ahead and use the uh, control software here and essentially just record the positions and then we can just call these functions so I'm going to show you that now with the subroutine um, Python script I created so cat sub.py so if you remember earlier I defined these two uh, subroutines sequence 0 and sequence 1 and they already have the movements defined so we're just going to go ahead and call those uh, functions essentially and then they should move the servos accordingly. So now we can we can see here uh, it's very similar to our script above um, you know import maestro import time you know initialize the controller then right here the difference instead of we instead of setting setting the uh, servo manually uh, the acceleration and target we are just calling this subroutine zero. So right here I'm calling this 
subroutine zero, printing a message, and then I'm gonna sleep for a couple seconds, and then I'm gonna call the, the second subroutine, and then also print that message. So let's go ahead and do that. So Python sub.py. So it, it runs through all of those movements, and then it calls the next uh, function essentially, and then it runs the next. So in this way, it's much easier to configure multiple uh, servos with very complex movements and also you can sort of abstract the complexity um, to the Python script without having to deal with you know like for example threading uh, because there's really no way you can easily control multiple servos in this manner but with the this sort of process I've just showed you it's much easier to uh, go ahead and do that so yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. That's sort of like a simplified look at the Maestro controller and some of its functionality. Um, if you have any questions, leave comments down below. Uh, you know, like and subscribe. It's always appreciated. And yeah, stay tuned for some upcoming videos. I know it's been a while. Um, I have a lot of things in the works. So yeah, see you later, guys. Peace.